In our last video, we went over some important definitions. We learned the definition of direct material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, selling and administrative expenses. And we, we talked at some length about those definitions. And if you don't understand those definitions or you don't know them clearly, you probably shouldn't be trying to tackle a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Go back and watch that previous video and you'll understand them better. Then you'll be ready to take on this uh, video. So in this video, we're going to go through an example of a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. I'm going to show you how to prepare it and the thought process that goes into it. Uh, we'll also, in the subsequent video, you can see it's asked here in the question, we'll learn how to prepare a schedule of cost of goods sold as well as an income statement. So this is a very typical question I might ask to my class, uh, either in class or on a test. Uh, and it just sort of lists a bunch of accounts in random order and says, make sense of this. You know, here's a bunch of random accounts. You do it. Tell, uh, show me a schedule of cost of goods manufactured, a schedule of cost of goods sold, and an income statement. And, uh, you know, make sense out of this mumbo jumbo. And that's exactly what it is, mumbo jumbo. So let's read through the question. If you haven't done so, you can click right below this video. I'll have provided a link so you can download the question yourself and have it in front of you and maybe practice uh, using it. Uh, but let's work through the problem together. So the question says, the following data relate to Bill's baggage company for the year ended December 31st, 2012. And there's a jumble of data. Then below it says, based on the information above, in good form prepare a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. That's what we're going to do this video. A schedule of cost of goods sold and an income statement. We'll do both of those next video. So um, it's hard to kind of know where to start. But remember, when we talked about cost last time, we said the cost of any product is the material the labor and the overhead, not those selling and admin expenses. Those are period expenses. Material, labor, and overhead, we said, are part of the cost of the product, the cost of the goods we manufactured. So consequently, our uh, co schedule of cost of goods manufactured is going to somehow look like a summary of direct materials plus direct labor plus overhead. But we've got to do that in a very logical and rational way. So what I want to do is I want to go through each account and I just want to identify the ones that are material, labor, and overhead related. And those are the ones we're going to use to help us to prepare our schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Now, I've got some bad news and I've got some good news. The bad news is some of it might be a little bit tricky and a little bit confusing. But the good news is if you practice this stuff, you're going to get comfortable with it. So let's read through. Uh, okay, so the first account I see on my list here is sales revenue. Well, that's not material, it's not labor, it's not overhead. So I'm not going to worry about it for the time being. That'll come into account in my income statement. Beginning and ending work in process. And remember now, any inventory kind of goes through three phases. It goes from being raw materials to being whip, work in process. Some people say work in progress to being a finished good. So this isn't our beginning inventory. This is inventory that we've started working on. And it is going to come into play, but not until the end of our schedule of cost of goods manufactured. So I'll come back to that uh, at the end of this video. Sales commissions, well, that's a selling expense. I've got to say, is that material? No, it's not material. Remember, material is the stuff that we use to make our product. Right, it's the raw material, it's the, I guess in bag, it's the leather or the cloth that goes into the baggage. Uh, is it labor? Well, no, sales commissions isn't direct labor because direct labor is the cost of the hands that made the product or the luggage. And the, our salespeople aren't making the product, so they're, they're not direct labor. Is it MOH? And remember, MOH is indirect factory cost. Well, sales commissions are not a factory cost, right? We don't pay our salespeople to walk around our factory, they're out there selling. So they're not a factory cost. So sales commissions are not DMDL or MOH. Now, if you watch my last video, I said, OK, if it's not DMDL or MOH, it's probably selling or administrative expense. And sales commissions are indeed a selling expense. The next one, income tax expense. This is another one. It's Is income tax expense a material? Nope. Is it a labor? Nope. Is it overhead? Well, no, it's it's not a factory cost. It's a cost that kind of falls outside of those. It's its its own expense. It's an income tax expense. Purchases of raw materials. OK, well, I'm going to identify that as something that's going to affect my direct materials. 
Uh, raw materials inventory on January 1st. Yeah, that's going to affect my direct materials as well. Uh, raw materials inventory December 31st. Absolutely, that affects my raw materials. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the next one down, direct labor. Well, that affects my direct labor. I shouldn't be moving down like that with my lines. The next one, depreciation of factory equipment. I've got to say to myself, okay, is it direct material? Absolutely not. Is it direct labor? Nope. Is it MOH? Well, I got to say, is that an indirect factory cost? Depreciation factory, well, it's factory cost. It's not direct material, it's not direct labor, but it happened in the factory. It must be MOH. Sorry about my line there. Uh, next up, depreciation of office equipment. Well, is it direct material? No. Is it direct labor? No. Did it happen in the factory? No. So it's not DM, it's not DL, it's not MOH. Utilities factory. Is it direct material? No. Is it direct labor? No. Did it happen in the factory? Yes. Well, it must be one of those indirect factory costs. It must be an overhead cost. Finished goods inventory. Well, once a good is finished, it's ready to ship. It's actually not even necessarily in our factory. We, we could put it in a storage warehouse or somewhere else. It's not to do with a factory cost, so it's not material, it's not labor, it's not overhead. Again, it's something else. Indirect materials. Indirect materials are absolutely MOH cost, as is indirect labor. They're indirect factory costs. Administrative wages, well we said if it's material, labor, overhead, or is it selling an admin? Well, administrative wages are administrative costs. They don't happen in the factory. They're not materials, they're not labor. I'm not gonna count them. Indirect labor absolutely is an overhead cost. It's an indirect factory cost. Factory supervisor salary, well, it happened in the factory. Is it direct material? No, you might say, oh, it's direct labor though. Well. If the supervisor doesn't actually put his hands on the baggage that we're making, his cost is an indirect factory cost. It's an overhead cost. And last, utilities office. Well, it's an office expense. It didn't happen in the factory, so it's not material labor overhead. It's, it's an administrative expense. All right, so we're through our list. We've identified materials items, labor items, and overhead items. Now we've just got to put it in some logical format. And that logical format is called a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. So let's go ahead and start filling in our chart.